Hey, what is up you guys? Today I am talking about my statistics for the first half of the year. We are officially into July, which means it is now the second half of 2021. So it's a good opportunity to look back at all my statistics from the first half of the year, all the books I've read, the authors, the publishing years, just a bunch of different stuff and see if there's any patterns, see if there's anything I want to change, see if I'm achieving any of my goals that I set at the start of the year, which I'm not going to lie, I can't really remember most of them. Um, I know my main goal for this year and one that I've been actively working towards is to read less authors from the USA. I think it's very easy to get stuck into reading authors that are just from the USA and England and I've really been trying to widen my horizons, read a little bit more diversely from a bunch of different countries and have I done it? I guess we'll find out soon. I hope you enjoy this video. If you do, please leave a like and please subscribe. I had like quite a fun time, you know, getting all these graphs and stuff together. It's mostly just pie charts. I mean, it is all pie charts. <laughs> um, I'm not like a mathematical person. I just think that keeping a spreadsheet and this type of stuff is fun. So I hope you enjoy. They're not anything special. They're not, you know, just Angus levels of um, amazing, perfect editing, you know, spinning graphs and stuff, but I think they're pretty fun. So yeah, if you enjoyed this video, leave a like and let's just get started. So I'm first of all just going to run through a couple, not charts, I don't even know what you would call these, but basically I have read 90 books exactly so far this year, or from January to June. I finished a book yesterday on the 1st of July, so that one doesn't count. I read 68 different authors, so I've obviously not been reading a lot of sequels and stuff, you can tell from that. And I read exactly, according to Excel, 27,998 pages. That is so annoying that it is like <laughs> two underneath 28,000, but we'll just run that. We'll just say 28,000 pages. Um, I don't know. I should have worked out like what that works out to, like per day or something. That could have been fun, but I don't think that far ahead. My average star rating so far in 2021 has been 3.85, and my average page count, as in you know what that means. <laughs> like the average amount of pages in a book that I read is 243 and I actually feel like that's pretty accurate. I feel like I do go for books that are around that range so I would say that's pretty accurate. The oldest book that I read so far this year is Memoirs of Fanny Hill by John Cleland. This came out in 1748 and I talked about that one in my first episode of my LGBT classics video which will be linked in the description as always. And the newest book that I've read this year was 90s Kids by Savvy Lesser and that came out on the 8th of June 2021, so literally last month. And I just reviewed that in my June wrap up which will also be linked in the description. So if you want to find out my thoughts on those books, that's where to go. Um, I enjoyed both of them though I will say right now, that's not really a spoiler. The shortest book that I've read this year is Overshare by Charlotte Frears. Charlotte is a well, I would call her Char, to be honest. She always goes by Char. Um, as a fellow booktuber who released a poetry collection and all of the profits from it went towards a mental health charity. So I will have the link to her channel down below and like her video for that. I don't think she has any physical copies left, but she definitely has, you know, obviously the digital copies. And I really enjoyed it. It was a great poetry collection. And it's obviously also raising money for charity. So it's like a win-win-win for everyone. And Char is very talented. So I would highly recommend checking that out. The longest book I've read this year is Queen of Air and Darkness by Cassandra Clare and this had 870 pages. This technically on Goodreads comes up as like over 900 pages but I'm pretty sure when I put it in it's because there was a lot of like, I think there was a preview for the next book or something so I had to cut that out and include that. But yeah, 870 pages is pretty impressive. Last year I was obviously reading a few that were over a thousand with like Wheel of Time. Haven't read Wheel of Time this year. <laughs> maybe the second half of the year we'll go to it, maybe. I actually do have some plans to read some longer books in the second half of this year because I've been like putting them off quite a lot. I just feel like it's much easier to go for shorter books, but I've been re-evaluating my priorities and stuff recently about like when I, what I want to read and stuff. So maybe expect a couple of books over a thousand pages later on. Now my most read author is, as always, Cassandra Clare. I've read six books by her. And it's hard for it not to be Cassandra Clare just because of the amount of books that she has in the Shadowhunter series. But I have now caught up with almost all of the books in the main series. There's only the like Magnus and Alex ones which don't really count that much. I need to read and then, you know, it's just the new releases. So now we're going to move on to the pie charts. So I'm going to move right to the end of the screen so there's lots of space for the charts. But the very first one is my star ratings and I was very surprised to find out that I have gave more 5 stars than anything else. 
I genuinely thought that I was being kind of harsh with ratings this year. Last year, I barely gave out three star ratings for most of it. And I was like, you know what? More books deserve three stars. I can't give everything four stars. So I've been giving more things three stars, but apparently I still give out five stars more than anything. What helps this, to be fair, I think, is that I've done a bunch of rereads in January and they were all five stars apart from The Virgin Suicides, which done, went down to a three star. So that was quite the, <laughs> the jump down. But, you know, even then, I guess I'm just like reading a lot of good books, which I can't really complain about. So, you know, four star or five star, I'm happy about that. Obviously, as you can also see, there's no one or two stars. I've just not read any books I've hated this year at all. The no ratings is poetry. I decided that I didn't want to rate poetry just because I feel like it's so different from novels. Even, you know, if a novel is like good or bad, like you can always like find some stuff with it. Like poetry is just like such a different format. So I don't like to rate poetry because I really just don't know how, to be honest. My next chart as the format of the books that I've been reading and I've actually been getting really into audiobooks this year which I think in a video last year I said like I didn't like audiobooks at all I really came around to them and started to enjoy them and I've been reading like at least or listening to at least once a month so I have eight audiobooks 15 ebooks and 67 physical I'm quite happy with this I always prefer to get my physical TBR done before anything else I have quite a big ebook TBR but I bought all of them for like 99p each or like I got them for free. Like I have the entire Wayward Children series on my Kindle for free that I got from like Tor.com. So I'm not like too bothered about that. I like having the ebooks as like a little extra like when I went to London and stuff. But my main focus is always on my physical TBR. So I am pretty happy with this one and audiobooks as well. You know, I've been listening to at least one a month, sometimes two. I actually have two Audible accounts because I got like one that had like three months free or something. And then I got another one. I don't know, I'm just like a scammer when it comes to Audible, to be honest. The next one is the page counts of the books I've been reading. And I have quite a lot of books actually, which are under 100 pages. And that's because I've been reading a lot of the little mini Penguin Moderns, which I always talk about. I've been reading like at least one of those a month, sometimes two. And that's what that is for the most part. I'm not surprised to find that, you know, 200 to 299 is my most popular. I just really feel comfortable with books in that length because to be honest, I can get through them in two days normally or sometimes three days uh, it just depends on what it is but when I see a book in that you know page range I'm like okay that's easy I only read one that was 800 to 899 that was Queen of Air and Darkness and you know bigger books in general are just like very lacking I would say anything over 500 as a bigger book which obviously as you can see there is only 13 of those so I think I definitely do want to try more bigger books in the second half of this year because I just feel like why read this big book when I could read two or three smaller books but I'm trying to get out of that mindset because there is a lot of bigger books I want to read. For example, Atlas Shrugged by Anne Rand. I've heard so many controversial things about it and I just really want to read it for myself and like just like get my head around it. I don't know, I just keep seeing it everywhere recently and I feel like it's a sign of God that I need to find out what this is actually all about. Publishing year. Um, I was actually surprised how much of these were from the 1950s to 1999. It was almost as much as 2010, 2019. And, you know, I always think that I read, obviously I do read a lot of classics. I thought a lot of mine were more like older, older classics, but I guess I've been reading a lot of modern classics this year, which I didn't even realise I was really doing. Because like the main classics group that I've been reading recently has been for the LGBT classics videos. For that one I'm only up to the 1940s so I'm actually quite surprised how many of these are you know 1950 to 1999 but I'm done with that. Um, 2010, no 2020 sorry I've actually read much more than I thought I did. I don't really keep up with new releases and stuff but I guess that I have actually read more new slash recent releases than I even realised. And then I think it's pretty cool that there's one from the 1700s uh, which obviously I already talked about. I just think that's cool. I actually really wish that I had read some of my Ancient Sithon books just so that I had, you know, a bit on this for like BC. That would be pretty cool, but maybe next year or later this year. I don't know. That was just a flop that read a fun for me. Like I just wasn't in the mood. Next, we have the age category of the books I've been reading. And we have two children's books, 20 young adult books and 68 adult books. And I'm happy with this. I do like young adult, but I'm much happier, you know, 
moving away from it into adult. I like having a young adult every now and then to, you know, just keep things light. I feel like young adult books I can normally fly through just super fast, but to be honest, I'm just more drawn towards adult books recently and especially classics. I'm just like much more interested in classics more than ever this year. They've always been my thing, but this year especially, I'm just like really in the mood for them. Uh, children's books, I don't even know what those were. Those two, I actually should have checked that. No, I think it was um, Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry Finn. I think I put them as children's, maybe. I actually don't know. And then I don't read middle grade. I don't get the middle grade thing. I'm sorry. I just have no interest in that at all. Percy Jackson, I read, which some people say middle grade. I would call it young adult. I don't know, like just the middle grade like thing on booktube. <laughs> I mean, you do you, but it's not for me. I don't, I'm not interested. Genre is very, um, just all over the place. There is so many different genres. I find it really hard actually to kind of pinpoint what genre, especially classics, are. Like, for example, the psychological one is Lolita. I would not call Lolita psychological, but I was like googling and googling, like trying to find what I could possibly put it under. And someone said psychological, and I was like, you know what? It kind of makes sense. So I threw that in there. Uh, what else do I have to say about this? Obviously, fantasy is the biggest, and I'm not surprised with that. Fantasy is like my favorite genre, I would say. Classics aren't a genre, but obviously, I would say like there's classics, and then fantasy is like what my go tos are. And I'm really into sci fi recently. I'm actually reading uh, a lot of H.G. Wells this month. I just, I'm right in the mood for sci fi, so. I'm surprised um, that one is so big already because I didn't think I'd read that many sci-fi, but it is what it is. Oh, I also want to say the one adventure book is The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn because I was like, what could that even be? I was like, maybe historical fiction? And then I was like Googling and someone went, well, it says adventure in the title. I was like, okay, I guess it's an adventure book. The next one is how I, like, do I own the book or not, basically. And four of the books that I've read were my dad's, three were from the library, one was online, this was Heartstopper Volume 4, and then 82 of them were ones I owned. I'm quite happy with this. I do really like using my library, but over the last year I've just like amassed such a big physical TBR uh, that I obviously just want to get through those. And the library was actually shut until basically May, maybe? I think it was like the start of May they finally reopened, so I haven't really had the chance to go to the library much. But once my physical TPR gets down, I would like to get back into like the habit of using the library more instead of buying so many books. Next is um, how the books were published. So I try and read at least one self-published book a month, and I have read officially six self-published books. So that is really cool. I'm really happy with that. Obviously, I didn't actually read one a month. I read like two last month, like, but it worked out to be basically one a month, so I'm happy with that. I really do like self-published books, I wish more people on books have talked about them and give them a chance because you find like so many just interesting like hidden gems in there. Online, where Heartstopper, one of them was Heartstopper, oh one of them was Heartstopper, I think one of them was like a Cassandra Clare extra thing maybe? I can't actually remember. And then the rest were traditionally published. I thought about trying to like split that into like traditional like like the big publishers and then like the indie publishers but that's just um, too much work. Next we have rereads and I have done 11 rereads and 79 not rereads and I'm quite happy with that again I really do love doing rereads but I just feel guilty when I do them because I do have this physical TBR like looming over my shoulder so I am putting off doing rereads again until like January probably but I really want to reread The Bell Jar so bad Rebecca already, Twilight, I just always want to reread Twilight like all the time. So I am looking forward to doing some more rereads. And I'm Jane Eyre, I really, really want to reread Jane Eyre. It's been like, I, I think I read that in like March 2019. And I was going to do it back in January, I just never got the chance. I think this is the last one now. Oh no, it's not. This is the last one for like the books. So the type of book. Um, obviously, in the majority of them are novels. We have three essays. These are mostly the Little Penguin modern classics. There was the Martin Luther King ones. There's Audre Lorde and James Baldwin. Um, memoir is Hillary, not Hillary, oh my god, not Hillary Clinton. Um, Barack Obama and Michelle Obama. I have three mangas. This was when I was in like a little death note mood. Um, short story and short story collections are just put as one. But again, these are mostly the Little Penguin mini moderns. 
And one web comic was obviously Heartstopper. Oh, and the one children's book that I didn't put, normally I, I would just put them as like a novel. Oh, that's what it was. It was so the two children's books were Huckleberry Finn and The Little Prince, the French one. So I put The Little Prince as a children's book instead of a novel, just because it was like mostly pictures, to be honest. And then for my authors, I have read 22 female authors and 46 male authors. I'm kind of surprised at this. I find that normally my uh, author like gender split is basically 50-50 just by chance. I don't really actively try and keep it 50-50 but it always works out that way but apparently this year it's not. And if I was to take a guess, well I know for a fact obviously I was doing like a lot of the spoiler for the next slide and um, like all the Japanese classics and the French classics and stuff and they were all men and then a lot of the LGBT classics have been written by men as well so I think that's maybe where this came from but I would like to you know try and even this out at some point this year. This is one of my main goals actually for the rest of this year. I'm not making like an act of like I will purposefully read more female authors over male authors but I would like to try and find that balance. And then finally the country that authors came from I have 26 from the USA, which is still the biggest section, but in comparison to like the rest of the pie chart, I think that's pretty good compared to what it could be. I read 11 from England, which I'm like, okay, whatever. 10 from Japan, I'm really happy with that. Russia, 5. What else is big? Um, France, 6. So I'm quite happy with this. My one issue though is that I have not read a single Scottish author at all this year, which is pretty embarrassing. I wanted to read at least one a month. Kind of like the, you know, self-published books, like, work it out, even if it doesn't work out one in a month exactly, like 12 over the space of the year at least. Ooh. But, I don't know. I really want to work on that. That's my main goal for the second half of this year, is to read more Scottish authors and then to get the gender split a bit more balanced. But overall though, I am pretty happy with this. I've read a lot of, like, interesting, like, one from Vietnam, one from the Philippines, uh, one from China. Like quite an interesting mix of countries there so I'm not too mad about that and that was the final pie chart so I don't really have much else to say I hope you enjoyed if you have any comments or thoughts at all obviously let me know let me know your, how you're doing with your goals are you achieving them are you not I feel like with this one especially it's like I am happy that I'm reading less in the USA but then I also haven't read any from Scotland so it's like <laughs> I'm like very much achieving one goal while very much failing the other and it's under like the same category of countries which is interesting but oh well I hope you enjoyed if you did please leave a like please subscribe if you're not before and I will see you in my next video